Hi and welcome to the channel Love Obstetrics and Gynecology. A bishop score or a cervix score is a pre-labor assessment that is done before the induction of labor so that we know how favorable a patient is for a vaginal delivery. The original bishop score which was given by uh, Dr. Professor Edward Bishop in 1964, he basically uh, did it to predict a successful outcome of an induction of labor and he along with the score also um, the score along with some history points such as the gestational age, parity, obstetric history, fetal position, the consent of patient all these things combined with the bishop score they gave us a predictability that how successful our induction of labor can be. So the original bishop score had five components that is the four cervical components and one for the fetal that is the fetal head station and the four cervical components that are actually the cervical dilatation, cervical effacement, cervical consistency and the cervical position. Now talking about the cervical dilatation and cervical effacement or in the modified bishops we have the cervical length. And this video will focus on these two components only. Just talking about the bishop score cervical length and the cervical dilatation. See, uh, we give uh, the total uh, the maximum score that is possible in a bishop score is 30. And the favorable one that uh, we consider that the cervix is favorable. And that it will be a successful outcome of a induction of labor or for a vaginal delivery. That means we need a bishop score of more than 6. That means it is a favorable cervix. And now just talking about the cervical dilatation and the cervical length. So that means basically the higher the score, it is more favorable. So talking about the dilatation and the length of the cervix. See we have scores 0, 1, 2 and 3. 0 means it is unfavorable type of condition and 3 means that is highly favorable. So in the cervical dilatation first we talk about, if we have the cervix as osteos, right? That means it is highly unfavorable. Because the cervix has to ripen up, the cervix has to dilate, it has to decrease in length and that means it is going to be more in labor. And if the cervix is having a os closed, that means it is a unfavorable cervix. So over here under the zero, we can write it as os closed. The next thing that we have is one. When do we give a score one? Supposedly it is just minimally dilated. That is one to two centimeter dilated. That is when we give a score as one. Then we have the score as Two. That is between when it is between 3 to 4 centimeter. And then we have a score 3. That it is even dilated more than 4 centimeter. You can say it as more than 4 centimeter or somewhere it is uh, written it as 5 plus centimeter. So here we can write it as 5 plus. Next thing that we have is our cervical length. Now in the modified bishop we have it as cervical length whereas in original bishop it was cervical effacement. Now firstly telling you about the cervical length and how the score is given and then I will explain you why this effacement was replaced by the cervical length. So first talk about let's talk about the cervical length. See as the cervix is going to get shortened it is going to get shortened the more the patient is in labor and more favorable it is. So if the patient is having a cervical length of more than 4 cm or 4 cm that means the patient has given a score of 0. Right? Then we have score as 1. And minimal decrease in length of the cervix. So you can say it, that it is between 4 to 2 cm. Then next we have is that it is even more shortened that is it is between 1 to 2 cm. And then uh, 3 is given when the cervix length is even less than a 
1 cm. So it is less than 1 cm. Now talking about the effacement. How the effacement was given. See in effacement this is the prior original bishop's code. This included was the effacement. And in the effacement we had was first 0 to 30 percent. 0 to 30 percent. Next we had was a category of 40 to 60 percent. And next category was 70 to 80 percent. And next was more than 80 percent. So now we have given some percentages. So percentages actually they do not tell you the exact measurement of the cervix. And this exact measurement is actually important. And why it is important? Because uh, if we don't get the exact measurement, there will be more inter-observer variabilities. Right? Someone assessed it as 2 cm. Right? The next one is going to observe it as also 2 cm. But in case someone says it is 30 percent effaced the other person says no if he feels like it is 50 percent is effaced so there will be a lot of inter-observer variability and that was taken care by the cervical length so now we use the cervical length instead of the cervical effacement now talking about how we practically assess the cervical dilatation and the length in the patient so how we do it Basically, before proceeding with the examination, you need to know a few things about yourself. You need to know how much your fingertip is wide, right? How much is your first phalanx, this one, how much long it is. And also you need to know how, uh, how wide apart can your middle and the index finger go. So that distance. So I'm going to measure these right. Um, just I'm going to show you how much are mine. And then we'll go ahead and learn how we measure the cervical length and the dilatation. So first let's measure the fingertip length. So that is around uh, 2.5 centimeter from that first phalanx right from that first joint. And the next thing that is my fingertip breadth. So this breadth that is around you can say it is around 1.3 centimeter and the next thing that I'm going to measure is my uh, on the outstretched hand, fingers of my index and the middle uh, index and the middle finger the distance between these and the outer borders right so that is going to be around so it is around 8.5 8.5 centimeter so, uh, doing a per vaginum examination and assessing the uh, cervix dilatation and effacement. It is a blind procedure. So, basically your hands are going to communicate as your eyes, as per your eyes could have communicated to the brain that this much is the dilatation and the effacement. So, your hands need to train as much. And uh, those training can be done definitely on the silicon models, you know, that are that should be actually available with every institute so that we learn uh, properly how much is that cervix dilated and how much is the length of the cervix but uh, we don't have it and we definitely don't have it in our um, hostels so definitely uh, the things that we have in our hostel is uh, definitely you have the rubber bands and you can have some solid things such as uh, bangles of various sizes so uh, first I'll say don't go with the rubber band because it can stretch as much as possible and uh, it will not give you much information, right? Uh, first go with something that is solid and that is going to restrict your finger movement. And I'll explain you why. Because uh, uh, two, you are going to always say if the patient is having a cervix which is dilated, uh, you are going to always insert two fingers and you are going to say it is two finger loose and it will be always two finger loose whether it is uh, slightly loose, more loose or widely apart. So how are we going to exactly assess how much centimeter is that dilated? That is the question of the R. So firstly like I have taken a small uh, solid bangle. So 
we can easily measure the diameter of this bangle and then we can insert our fingers inside it and keep them wide apart and know how much uh, actually uh, train our hands that this is our measurement this is how much diameter uh, the dilatation of the cervix will be when my fingers are this much apart so first measuring the bangle so here the diameter of the bangle is around you can say it is around 4 cm so now i'm going to keep my fingers inside it so if my fingers are this much wide apart inside the cervix it means that the patient is 4 cm dilated so you can see these are all things that I could gather and then I measured their diameters and I have written on the screen you can see. So now you have to just insert your finger inside it and assess uh, you know just train your hand how much actually uh, wide apart your fingers can be. So if I insert my two fingers inside it and these are very two finger tight. So this is my two finger tight so it is around 2.5 centimeter next thing is my four centimeter so this much loose is my four centimeter so now this cervix is also four centimeter dilated but you know you can if you see the cervix length over here was very much less you know i can just feel it only on just the superficial part of my tips but here if you see my four centimeter and it is almost you know covering my whole of my finger tip so it is a better length cervix so it is around 2.5 to 3 centimeter length right the next thing is my uh, this one so it is around 6 centimeter again i have to you know i have to insert my fingers and keep them wide apart and then let my hand uh, you know form a memory that this much is how much uh, it is dilated and this is my 7.5 centimeter so keep on practicing this daily on different sizes and then you keep on learning how much dilated the cervix is now coming on to the effacement see the effacement i think is better uh, better learned by the rubber band and I'll tell you why because you know cervix is also uh, cervix has different kind of consistencies and the rubber bands that you have they also have kind of different consistencies so uh, the rubber bands uh, you know they can be of a hard variety that do, do not go much up to stretchability or they can be go up to very much of flexibility those are basically the soft ones so talking about the effacement of the cervix now we have measured the fingertip and mine was around 2.5 cm. So when you go inside the cervix and you have to measure the cervical length. First you go inside the cervix and then you try to bring your finger back. You go inside the cervix and try to finger bring the fingers back. Now this is going to cause what? This is going to spread the cervix all around your fingertips. So if you go inside first it is going to curl it right and then you are going to come back and that when you come back that is the time when you assess the cervical length so as much as it is going to cover the area on your fingertips so it can cover it beyond your first phalanx or it can cover less than your first phalanx and you have to uh, you know si simultaneously assess how much that could be so if it is covering more than my first phalanx, definitely it is going to be more than 2.5 cm. So I can say it is approximately around 3 to 4 cm. And if it is going to be less than the first phalanx, so that is less, it is definitely going to be less than 2.5 cm. It is going to be around 1 to 2 cm. And if I can only feel a minimal ring, that means it is definitely less than 1 cm. So it is going to give a higher score, that is score 3. So this was all regarding cervical dilatation and the cervical length. So hope you uh, like my video. Please, if you like, please do like, subscribe and share the channel of Love Obstetrics and Gynecology. And keep tuned in for the more video and specifically my next video on the Bishop score part 2 which will include the cervical position, the cervical consistency and the fetal station. Thanks for watching.